In this video, we'll look at real-life situations that involve units of measure. The topic of math is called descriptive modeling. A mother wants to buy five pints of milk for each of her three children. She can buy the milk in pint cartons for 60 cents each, or she can buy two one-gallon containers of milk for three dollars each. How much will she save on milk if she buys two gallon containers of milk? So the information that we know is that she wants five pints of milk for each of her three children. That means she needs 15 pints of milk. 15 pints times 60 cents per pint. The 15 pints of milk would cost her $9. If she bought two gallons of milk, on the other hand, each costing $3 per gallon, that would be a total of $6. She would be a smart consumer if she bought the two gallon containers of milk. In fact, she would save $3 if she bought the two gallon containers of milk. Now let's consider an airplane model. An airplane model is a small version of an actual airplane that some people like to create and build and they like to put it on their tabletop or on their bookshelf. So an airplane model is using a scale where one inch represents three feet. The actual length of the airplane is 27 feet long. We are asked to find the length of the airplane model in inches. The given information from this first sentence can be written as a ratio. One inch over three feet. And I can set that ratio equal to another ratio involving 27 feet, which would go on the bottom, and x inches goes on the top. This math equation is called a proportion. You learned about proportions in middle school. We're going to multiply or divide to solve proportions. So we want to look for multiplication or division relationships. Do you see anything between the denominators? You know that 3 times 9 is 27. So apply that same relationship to the numerators. 1 times 9 is 9. So I know the length of the airplane model would be 9 inches. In the next example, we'll convert units to solve problems. Object A is moving at 12 feet per second. Object B is moving at 5 miles per hour. Which statement is true comparing the speeds of the two objects? And we're given four statements. But honestly, when I see problems like this, I don't usually look at the options right away. Instead, I think about my prior knowledge of what does it feel like if I'm in a car going 5 miles per hour? That's pretty slow, right, if you're in a car. Could somebody travel at 12 feet per second? Would that be a comparable speed? Or would one be faster or slower than the other? The best way to compare speeds is to get the same units. I'm more comfortable with miles per hour, so let's start with object B is given as 5 miles per hour. Now object A, that's given as 12 feet per second. What I want to do is convert this to miles per hour. So here's what I know. The conversion factors that I know is there's 60 seconds in one minute. Now the reason why that's helpful is because when you're multiplying and you have the same units on the denominator and the numerator, we can cancel those out. I know another conversion factor involving minutes and hours, that there's 60 minutes in one hour. And that's helpful because you see the minutes will cancel out. Now the denominator I'm left with the unit that I want. I want hours on the denominator because miles per hour means you want hours on the bottom. The problem is I want miles per hour, not feet per hour. So now I want to multiply by a fraction where feet is on the bottom and miles is on the top so that feet will cancel out. I know there's 5,280 feet in one mile. That's just a fact that um, either you know or probably will be given to you. Now I'm ready to multiply across because I have the units I want. I have miles per hour. So I take my calculator and I multiply my numerators and I get 43,200. I multiply my denominators and I get 5,280. Now I divide 
the numerator by denominator, and I get 8.18 repeating miles per hour. Well, that's approximately 8 miles per hour. So object B is moving at 5 miles per hour. Object A, 8 miles per hour. Can you see which of those options now is the appropriate one to choose? Object A is moving faster than object B by about 3 miles per hour. All right, finally, let's look at a graph. This is a bar graph. And um, the statement that's given is the graph below shows the yearly total shipping activity of pa packages for company ABC. And there's a bunch of options that I have to read, but again, before I read all those words, I like to look at the graph and make sense of the graph. I can see along the bottom that the company is tracking their shipping activity for the years 2002 through 2012. And I can see on the vertical axis, the highest that this goes looks like, oh, it's hard to see, it's small, it looks like 800,000 packages, and the smallest is 100,000 packages, and the intervals is 100,000. The bar that jumps out at me is the year 2007, because that is the year that the most number of packages were shipped. Another bar that jumps out at me is between 2002 or 2008. Those are the fewest number of packages sold, but 2002 being slightly less. Now that I've looked at the graph, I'm ready to look at my answer choices. According to the graph, which of the following statements are true? Is A true? The maximum number of packages shipped is 2004. That is not true. We already said the maximum number was 2007. B, the minimum number of packages shipped in one year is 2002. We established already that that was true. We can circle it. Um, I'm going to skip C for a second, but let's look at D. There are less packages shipped in 2011 than 2006. That is a true statement. I can circle it. Now let's look back at C. There are more packages shipped in 2009 than 2005. That is false. So you notice we're taking these options one at a time, we're comparing it against the graph, and we're choosing it, or we're eliminating it. Choice E. The maximum number of packages shipped is in the year 2007. Yes, we know that was true. And the last one, the same number of packages shipped in 2010 and 2003. That is false. We can eliminate it.